previously on Mastership Back to Win. Welcome back to the Mastership Kitchen, everybody. The audition battles began. There's someone from every season here. We only have 20 aprons this year. You all need to cook us the best comeback dish ever. I didn't come here to not get an apron. This the sauce for me is a miss. The dish is good, but it's not your average season. Five years has made quite a difference in your cuisine. The dish gives us all a stern reminder how early you left this competition last time. I just won an apron for the second time. Tonight, the back to win audition battles continue. So far, we've given out six aprons, which leaves 14 up for grabs. Ah! As more returning faces, including Junior. I have unfinished business in the MasterChef kitchen fight to get their hands on the coveted MasterChef apron. Wow, the competition is fierce. We've got a lot of fine cookery going on tonight. No mistakes can be made. Shaking. What's paid to? You know as well as I do that that's wrong. So far, we've had some amazing comeback dishes, and the bar has been set so high. We're all so glad to have you back to win. Look at our previous champions, like Christine from season three, Claudia from season six, and Sean from season seven. They have all gone on to fully realize their culinary dreams. One of you will join their ranks and win the title of MasterChef. <laughs> Right, so far, we've handed out six aprons, which leaves just 14 aprons up for grabs. Now, when I call your name, please make your way down to your battle stations. Let's go. Willie, season five. Derek Prince, season two. Tully, season six. And Micah, season ten. I'm Willie. You may remember me from season five of Master Chef. I was a director of music at my church, and I was just, you know, barely getting my feet wet into this culinary industry. Watch out for Willie. He's here to bake. <laughs> but it's been seven years since I've been in the Master Chef kitchen. Now I'm a full service catering company owner. I'm the executive chef. And so I have a few tricks up my sleeve that I don't think the judges are expecting. Bring it. Welcome back. You four have something in common. You all finished in seventh place. So we could say that you're all unlucky number seven. Turn that around tonight and cook a comeback dish that is good enough to get your hands on a comeback apron. You guys ready for this? Yes, Chef. Your 45 minutes start now. Let's go. <laughs> Right, four amazing cooks from four different seasons. Sadly, all finished in seventh place. Derek, watch your corn. I want a char on it. Derek, season two, a lot has changed. Congratulations, I'm a big yes for you. Thank you, Chef. When I was on MasterChef, I showed up as someone who loved food but made my living doing web design. After the show, I became a chef. I'm the chef de cuisine in one of the busiest restaurants in New York City. To be here on MasterChef, I left a kitchen of people that rely on me, and I really owe it to them to kick some ass. Derek, how are you, young man? What's going on, Chef? How's it going? What do you got going on? Talk to me about that. All right, so I'm going to do some deep-fried shrimp. I'm going to make a corn pudding. So you think the shrimp dish, corn pudding, is going to be enough and compelling to get you that apron? I think so. It shows technique. There's a lot of knife work. And I think uh, it's a real homage to the ingredients. This just seems a little simple. We're back to win, so everything has to be perfectly done. Yes, Chef. Stay the course, young man. Yes, Chef. Let's go, win it! Don't get distracted. Big Willie! Yes, Chef. Well, what's it like having your mom and your aunt here breathing all over you? It's, 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 a, it's a little pressure because my mom has a high standard of me. He's telling the truth on that. Tell me about the dish. I'm doing a Cajun poached halibut. Halibut. Hardly any fat in that. Why such a difficult protein on a night like tonight? Because I'm a difficult kind of guy. That's, That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> I'm back to win. I'm here with a vengeance. Good yes, luck. Chef. Big Thank Willie. you. Welcome back. 25 minutes remaining. 
Got me ducking and weaving, Tommy. You know I wouldn't hurt a fly. I'm Tommy from season six. I love to present food in a fashionable way on the plate. Tommy. Oh. Beautiful. So much story. This is you. Since being on MasterChef, I've done morning cooking shows, and I wound up being a brand ambassador in the Netherlands. My competitors think that I'm all talk and all fashion. But you know what? I'm ready to show down in this kitchen. Tommy, start your quail. Tommy, how you doing? So. What is the dish? This is quail in a nest. And the yeah. nest is made out of what? Kata ifi pastry. How are you going to cook yes, quail? Because I'm a fashion designer. I got it. I'm going to treat this quail like haute couture fashion. So, so this is like a runway project. And guess what? You see, I got the wishbone. Let me let me give the. the you want, no, 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 you don't get to touch no, we, my no, wishbone. We, we, we get to split it. Oh, no, we don't get to split it. This is my wishbone. You go get your own wishbone, Joe. That's what you gave, Joe. Now, I know you put on a good show, but you need to put on a show on the plate today. That's what I'm going to judge you on. I am. I hope you're right. Oh, good luck, Michael. Let's go. Right, Mike, you're welcome back. Tell me about the dish. So today I'm going to be making you a yuzu ricotta fritter with blackberry gin sauce, scratch chocolate soil, and star anise powdered sugar. Wow, so that sounds complicated, sophisticated. You seem in control now, and you seem content. Just to have my sister Tiger Hill. I'm just so proud of you, Micah. <laughs> if you remember on my season, you know, I really struggled with my parental support. A lot of my family do not view culinary arts as a worthy way to spend my time. So on season 10, I entered this competition with no self-confidence. Tonight, you're not alone, OK? You're with us. You're with the MasterChef family. Since leaving MasterChef, I had a new level of self-confidence. I've worked in two separate Michelin-starred restaurants, and I studied baking for a year. I've never grown as fast as I did since MasterChef 10 happened. This dish sounds amazing. If you pull this off, uh, you're wearing that apron. Thank you, Chef. Good luck. I'll do you proud. Last 10 minutes. Keep it going, guys. Come on. Get home. Wow, uh, what a cook-off. I mean, they are energized. Derek over here is going to make shrimp and corn pudding. It seems like a little bit like bar food, you know? Like, is it gourmet enough? Go back to win. Deep breath, deep breath, Micah. You got this. Micah is going to do like a, a ricotta fritter with a, a black chocolate crumble. It sounds a very, very complicated dish. I'm not too sure if we can get that done in 45 minutes. If it's undercooked, then it can destroy that whole texture. Big Willie, uh, he's poaching a halibut. The halibut's always been very tricky in the MasterChef kitchen sure. because it doesn't have any interior fat, and no. you really have to sauce it right. And it's very hard to determine if it's cooked or not. Two minutes to go, guys. Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Check your corn. Come on, Micah. Micah, let's go. We got to get food on the plate. Yes, sir. Shaky. Yeah. 20 seconds left. 20 seconds, let's go! Uh, what is Micah doing? He's got to get some food on the plate, guys. through the master fresh Right, this is it. Only two aprons up for grabs. Big Willie, let's start with you, please. My dish tonight is a Cajun poached halibut with a purple cauliflower puree and a spicy roasted corn relish. Big Willie, it looks beautiful. Thank you. It's elegant. I go back to the beginning of the journey when you were plating food rustic, but this is on a different level. This yep. is good. It's very nice. Really, the fish is cooked beautifully. It's listening. Very difficult poaching fish, but it just needs that hit of lime or lemon, especially across that corn. Okay. But it is delicious. The puree is 
unnecessary for me personally, but I'm impressed that you were able to impart so much flavor to this halibut in such an abbreviated time. Really a restaurant quality dish, delicate, elegant. Willie, my friend, you've gone a long way. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Willie. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, man. Okay, good job. Derek, can you please bring your dish forward? Tonight I made crispy head on shrimp and corn pudding. Derek, the shrimp are great. I just love the idea that you're, you're, you're marinating in buttermilk, which you know tenderizes. So that shrimp tasted like lobster. Uh, well done. I like it. Thank you. I like the dish. I wish it was a little bit more punchy. The corn pudding is interesting, starchy. It feels like it has cornstarch or something in there to thicken it that didn't have a chance to cook out. But I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did, to be very honest. I think the flavors all mingle well together. Thank you. Next up, Tommy, please present your dish. My dish is quail in a nest with garden vegetables. It's got finesse. Um, I'm hoping it tastes as good as it looks, because in terms of presentation, it's an A star. Tommy, let's get one thing clear. Quail's cooked beautifully. Yeah, I love the seasoning on the quail. I think the only thing I've got as an irritation is that a phyllo pastry is just quite bland. You, know, you could have done with a little nest of potatoes. Good job. Thank you. Micah, please bring up your dish. So this is a yuzu citrus ricotta fritter with a blackberry gin sauce, scratched chocolate soil, and star anise powdered sugar. I love the uh, artistic expression. I feel like it's an extraterrestrial dish, a dish from outer space. Thank you. Shall we? Oh, it's a little raw, no? It's like a pudding. Uh, Micah, um, there's an amazing flavor coming off here. It's fresh and lively. The issue I have is the density of those fritters. And I think what you've done there is that you've looked at the color of the fritter on the outside and thought, damn, they're cooked. They're not. Micah, you work as a pastry chef. And you know as well as I do that that's wrong. Thank you. Even if the oil was a little bit lower, it could have actually cooked. Gentlemen, the fact of the matter is that we have two aprons to give out. I gotta say that this cook certainly earned this apron. It makes us incredibly proud to see someone like Willie and how far you've come. Now you're in the class of MasterChef back to win. The dish was excellent. Congratulations, Willie. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Looks good. Yes. This next apron goes to the individual that confirmed their passion on a plate once again. So I'm not going to call out any names. I'd like that person to step up here and take this apron with grace. So I'm not going to call out any names. I'd like that person to step up here and take this apron with grace. Tommy. You're not wrong. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome back. See, 
This wishbone is my good luck talisman. I just got an apron for the second time. <laughs> I'm back to win. I'm, I'm speechless. Me getting the apron just solidifies that I know what I'm doing and I deserve to be here. Of course I'm disappointed to not get an apron right now, but I'm still 21 years old and I know that I'm going places and I'm gonna do incredible things. We are eight aprons down, just 12 aprons remaining. Right, ready for the next battle? Oh. Kate, season eight. Sarah, season 10. Daniel, from season eight. And finally, Michael, from season 10. Let's go. Ready, brother? Good luck, bro. Hi, I'm Michael from season 10, and I was tied for 15th place. Michael and Liz, you've cooked for the last time in the MasterChef kitchen. And I know that I was sent home too early. The minute I got out of the show last time, I left my job in real estate and started my own business as a private chef, and now I've published two best-selling cookbooks worldwide. I've walked away from everything that I'm doing to be here for this, so I cannot go home right now. Right, you guys ready? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Good. Your 45 minutes start now. Let's go. Good luck, guys. Woo, Sarah! Thank you. Come on, guys. Two from season eight, two from season ten. Woo! This is going to be a very, very tough cook. Kate, checking in. How you doing? I'm awesome. How you Good. doing, Bob? Feeling great. Hey, you guys. I'm Kate in season eight. I came in fourth place. Dino, please say goodbye to Kate and head on up to the balcony. When I was on season eight, I was working as a nutritionist, and now that has changed. I'm a full-time private chef in Chicago. I cook about 60 hours a week, and any other time, I'm out hunting, fishing. If I can find it, I want to cook it. And now I'm back because it's my time to win it. Just over 35 minutes to go. Right, how are you feeling, girl? I'm awesome. Uh, tell me about the dish. What are you doing for this comeback dish? I am making a mushroom rub venison loin that will be smoked. Wow. With a palm puree, sour cherry red wine sauce, and pickled mustard seeds. I love that you're playing to your strengths. Yeah. What would you do with a quarter of a million dollars? I'd definitely buy a farm. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Young lady, just over 30 minutes to do it. Thank you. Yes. Yep, I'm ready. Good luck. Good job, Kate. We're impressed up here. Woo! And scared. How are we doing out there? Everybody feel good? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes, Jeff. So talk to me a little bit about what you're doing. Um, so I'm doing a prosciutto wrap pod. I'm going to sear this off, finish it in the oven. I'm okay. going to do some glazed rainbow carrots. I'm going to have a lemon pea puree with some herbs in there. So I'm hoping that I've got a dish here that's going to win me an apron, Chef. I'm Chef Daniel from season eight, where I made it to top eight till I went down on the chocolate truffle challenge. Say goodbye to Daniel. It's all right, but that's not going to happen again this time. I just opened up my own food truck, which has been going great. And, uh, you know, and I'm excited to show the judges how far I've come since the last time I was here. Love it. Stay the course, young man. 20 minutes gone, 25 minutes remaining. Hello, Sarah. What are you making today? I'm making a crispy skin duck breast, a pipia mole, and pickled peaches. The duck is tricky because you have to cook it medium rare, obviously. The fat has to be rendered, and the skin has to be crispy. Yes, I wanted to really push myself. I'm here to win this for my family. My daughter actually remembers being at the finale. She thinks that I won. That was a very, very difficult one. Congratulations goes to... Dorian! I came so close to getting the title. I mean, I could see the win, I could taste it, but it just fell a little bit short. I did a lot of like private chefing after MasterChef. I got to like private chef for Alicia Keys. And now I'm really here to bring it and win the competition this time. Keep on cooking. Good luck with that duck. Thank you. Oh, Michael really looks professional down there. Right. Hey, how are you feeling? Oh, good chef. Now, let's be honest, you left this competition way too early last time. 15th. 100%. How's it feel to be back? Incredible. I didn't even think this was going to be possible to ever see this kitchen again. But what's the dream now? Because you've done so much. I've done the cookbooks. A restaurant is next. Mark my words. <laughs> Tell me about the dish. What are you doing? Well, I'm doing a Texas meets Mexico dish. We're doing a beautiful street corn grits wow. with a smoked filet mignon and a black garlic cherry sauce. Wow, so you've gone super posh on me now. What do you think about the competition you're up against tonight? This is like the all-stars of MasterChef, uh, so yeah, I gotta absolutely. keep up. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Last 15 minutes, guys. 30 minutes gone, 15 minutes to go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling the love, I'm feeling it. 
Sarah's gonna go ahead with a pepian, which is a different Love kind it. of mole. A mole is like a ragu. Hopefully, Sarah has enough time to make that mole develop yeah. and flavorful. Oh, there we go. We got a lot of fine cookery going on tonight. Venison, cod, duck, and filet. No mistakes can be made. Taste everything. Correct, mm. adjust, seasoning. Five minutes to go, guys. Come on. Look what Michael's doing, smoking that. Look. Oh! <laughs> Looking good, Danny. Come on. That looks perfect. Yes, yes. Yeah. Look at that venison. Useful. We're coming down to our last 60 seconds remaining. Oh. One minute to go. Come on, guys. Woo. Let's go. Come on, Michael. Come on, Kate. Y'all got this? What's Kate doing? She's smoking it. to smoke the venison. I just had a lot of other things to do, but there's smoke in my dish already, so you'll taste it. Okay, time to taste those dishes. Great job, guys, great job. All of you did awesome. Kate, please, come forward, bring your dish very carefully. Chefs, it's a mushroom rubbed venison loin with palm puree, sauteed wild mushrooms, and a sour cherry red wine sauce. Visually, it looks right on point, the crust looks Quite delicious. I hope it tastes good. Yeah, I did porcini mushrooms that I just ground in a spice grinder with some Aleppo chilies, and I painted and salted the venison with salt and Dijon. Um, Kate, it's a very accomplished, delicious dish. Did it need to be smoked at the end? Who knows? Uh, I think the dish is good enough standing alone, so great job. Thank you, Chef. The venison's cooked perfectly. The pump puree is smooth, delicious. The sauce might be my one criticism. It's a little bit dense. Um, I think if there's one failure on this particular dish, it would be the crust. It's not necessarily making a big impact in flavor, but everything else is rocking and rolling. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Good job, Kate. Good job, Kate. Danny, can you please bring your dish forward? Tonight, I've made a prosciutto wrapped cod with a lemon pea and herb puree and some roasted carrots. Uh, Daniel, visually, he looks beautiful. Uh, he's got that resting quality. Uh, fish is cooked beautifully. Thank you. But when you plate like this, you have to be careful about the sogginess of that prosciutto underneath. So have the confidence to go on the side of that puree. I think the salsa verde and the pea puree are kind of disjointed. They don't belong together. But I'm gonna tell you what I really appreciate about this is the boldness that you showed, which I love. Thanks, Daniel. Thank, Thank you, Daniel. you. Good job, brother. Good job. Next, Sarah, please present your dish. Today, I've prepared for you a crispy skin duck breast with a balsamic honey glaze, a pipium mole, and pickled peaches. I'm going to be interested to see how you can marry a pepion with a balsamic glaze. If that can happen, that's going to be a stroke of genius. Thank you, Chef. The duck is perfectly cooked. I like the acidity of the sauce, but it tastes a little, like, starchy to me. Yeah, making a mole is something that takes many, many years to learn how to master. You put cumin in there raw, cumin needs to be toasted, and it's really hard to marry balsamic and a pepian. They're kind of not getting along right now. The mole, I think I would have left that off, but I'm gonna come back to the hero of the dish, and that's the duck, and you have absolutely nailed that duck. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, sir. Michael, please bring us your plate. Here we go, gentlemen. So we've got a poulet mignon, smoked, then glazed in a black garlic cherry barbecue sauce. 
with a Mexican street corn grits uh, and some crispy leeks on top for texture. Well, I think visually the caramelization looks perfect. How should it be when I cut it open? I'm hoping for a medium rare. Oh, man. Nailed that. Looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Good job, Michael. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow. This filet could be anywhere in a two-star Michelin restaurant for how it's cooked, and it could be anywhere in a great barbecue roadhouse in Texas for the flavor of the smoke and the sauce. Bravo. Wow. The leeks, they're not adding anything to the dish. If you want to use them, make a puree or something that okay. sort of highlights their beautiful sweetness. Thank you, chef. Man, that's delicious. It reaffirms that you left this competition last time round way too prematurely because that is finale worthy. Great job. Good stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much, chefs. Thank you, Michael. Great job. Good job, Michael. Uh, right, you four. Um, excuse for a moment, please. Good luck, guys. Good luck. This is super hard. I like the theme. I like the thought process. I really liked it. Everybody cooked their protein perfect. That's true. We're happy? No. Ready? All right, a lot of very impressive dishes that tell us your ability. The first apron goes to... Michael, put this on. <laughs> Don't burn out too quick this time, bro. Let us, let us eat some of that good food. That was an amazing dish. Congrats, Michael. One apron down, just one apron left to give out to this group. But this apron's gonna go to... Give it up for Danny! The competition is fierce. There are no weak links here. So it's game on, game face every single day. <laughs> I didn't even make top 10 my last season here. And tonight, I just beat out the runner-up from my own season. So yeah, I got a lot of pressure, but I think I can do this. Good job, bro. Of course I'm disappointed, but I don't disagree with the judges' call. I knew it the mole. It was really risky, and it's a tough competition. Man, that was tough. Yeah. The embarrassment of becoming a runner-up and then having to vouch for your apron again. Sometimes there's a right way and a wrong way. That risk of balsamic and cumin, yeah. it's just too much. So, so. It's back to win. It's the most fierce competition in the history of MasterChef. Yeah. The audition's night continued as four more back to win contestants battle it out for a coveted white apron and a spot in the top 20. Get it going, boys. We had Brian O'Brien from season oh, yeah. eight, Bowen from season nine, Newton from season eight, and Stephen from season six. Two, one, go! <laughs> Brian, describe the dish, please. Chef, you have the new and improved Filet O'Brien. My problem here in the pan sear on the filet has turned the texture into a bit of like a sandy, grainy texture in the meat, which I don't enjoy. Senor Newton. Chefs, I have the filet mignon. It's got a sweet and tangy barbecue glaze. Newton, the filet is cooked beautifully, but there is so much heat in that sauce that it actually destroys the quality. Bowen. It's a flaming mignon young pasta liquor served with Thai chili, finger lime vinegar and sauce. Bowen, the pasta are delicious. Really good indeed. This sauce is action-packed and a really beautiful assault of flavor in a good way. Thank you, Chef. Stephen, please. This is a rabbit and donuts with sauteed dandelion greens and cactus berry salsa. People have been eating chicken and waffles for so long. Let's do rabbit and donuts. This dish is psychedelic. It's like a trip on your palate of deliciousness. I'm getting goosebumps because I, I've never tasted anything quite like that before. 
What's the first thing you want to do when you take a bite of that? Take a second. Thank you. Please step forward. Stephen. And Bowen. Thank you, Chef. I cannot be any happier than what I'm doing right now. I feel like I'm on top of the world. <laughs> I got the apron, and now I'm scared to death. We are 12 aprons down, just eight aprons remaining. Now, this next battle might be one of the most exciting ones we've ever witnessed. From MasterChef Junior to MasterChef Back to Win, Shane, Dara, Taylor. Hey guys, it's Tejo from season four of MasterChef Junior. I really want to win this. Last time I was here, I was 12. It's been seven years, went through high school, then I've been to culinary school. I'm coming back to win this competition. Shane! Oh boy, young man, am I happy to see you. Thanks for having me. Remember me guys, Shane the Train from MasterChef Junior season five. Shane, how you doing? Good, they call me Shane the Train because I like finding the biggest guy and then going right at him. I made it in the top three. Shane, this is why we started this competition, based on boys like you, you know that. It's been five years, I've grown up a lot. I mean, I don't have a mohawk. I started college and I am working at a Vietnamese barbecue fusion restaurant. I feel like I have unfinished business in the MasterChef kitchen and I am ready to prove Chef Shane the Train is here to stay. Dara. Hello, a Chef. <laughs> season one, MasterChef Junior finalist, the winner of MasterChef Junior. Congratulations. Alexander. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for our runner-up, Dara. People might remember me as a Dara the Bow Girl. Can have a look at that, please? Yes. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> yeah? What do you think? <laughs> but I've ditched the bow now and gained a culinary degree. I'm back to show that I'm meant to be a force in this industry. It's a lot of pressure, but I have to take my deep breaths and just keep in my zone. And I want to be the first MasterChef Junior contestant to come back on and win. You guys ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Your 45 minutes start now. Don't forget about the burners. Turn them on. There you go. We've got three incredibly talented MasterChef juniors. Tonight, we want to see their growth since we last saw them here in the MasterChef kitchen. Honestly, they all need to exceed our expectations. How you doing, Dara? Good, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> young man, how are you feeling? I'm doing great. You were 13 years of age last time you graced this floor. Yes, sir, I was a little younger. Shane, what competition are you in? MasterChef Junior! What's in the vinaigrette? Lemon, lime, olive oil! What does that make? I never thought this opportunity would come, but here I stand today. Tell me about this. What are you making? So I'm going to be making a Cajun risotto with a blackened catfish. Wow. And I'm also going to be making a Cajun cream sauce to top it off. Gotcha. I hope I can do enough to get that apron, Chef. Yeah, likewise. And how much rent do you pay mom and dad now? I like to tell them all the time that I'm a grown man. And whenever I tell them that, they always hand me the light bill. So that's pretty much it. Man, you got some great <laughs> parents. You know that. Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Well, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Dara, this is quite impressive. Your setup here is super professional. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing. I'm doing Chinese-style steamed cod with a stuffed bok choy. Then it's served with a seasoned dashi broth. And what's the dream? What do you want to do? You want to have an empire, you say? I do. I know I said that I wanted to take your job. Dara, what's the food dream? Be a judge on MasterChef. And whose job do you want to take? Joe. Joe's. Can you do a death stare? You got it. OK, you start next year. I'm about ready to retire, so you can have the keys well, to the empire. Perfect. Good luck, Dara. It's nice to see you. Just over 22 minutes remaining. Halfway. Come on, guys. Takes everything. Bring it. Hi, how are you? Hello, Chef. Good to see you again. Tell me about the dish. What are you doing? I'm doing something I like to call sleeping beef. we got a yuzu dashi brown butter pasta with a New York strip. So you're making what? A tagatelli? No, sir. Pasta blankets. Asian influence, though. I love that. Did you have any idea you'd be back here competing? Not at all, Chef. Sure. Last time I was here, I was a little boy. I was using sriracha on beef. I'm sure you remember. Because you just don't put sriracha over the best lobster and the best filet mignon. I've learned my lesson. I don't use sriracha anymore. Don't worry. Get your hands on that apron, yes? Yes, Chef. Welcome back, and good luck, young man. Thank you so much, Chef. We're coming down to the last 10 minutes remaining. The energy is definitely up there, and they're moving. 
as fast, if not faster, than the adults. Maybe their youth is an asset, not a liability. Exactly that. Where's your money on? I look. Dara's hard to beat, I think. She's eloquent, she's knowledgeable, and she's dangerous. You know, that dash your broth, that needs to be exceptional, that broth. Can you do that perfect broth in 45 minutes? It's a, it's a lot. That's the question. Wrong day. Shane has to nail the result, though, right? They all know it's either right or it's wrong. So he's got a lot of jeopardy there. Too easy, too easy. Tejo's dish sounds amazing. Fingers crossed that to cook on the steak is right. Sweet Marie, y'all this quiet! <laughs> We've now got one minute to go. Come on, guys. Speedy! 30 seconds to go. Look what Dara's doing. She's got a layer of oil. I and mean, she's heating that thing to sear in those aromats on top of that pot. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice stop. Well done. I'm shaking. I'm nervous. I wasn't able to taste it all together. This moment means so much to me. I'm feeling the pressure, and I'm just scared what they're going to say about this dish. What an amazing 45 minutes. You three former MasterChef Junior contestants did incredibly well. You should be very proud. Thank you, Chef. Tejo, please, let's start off with you. This is a dish I like to call sleeping beef. It is sugar snap peas in a brown butter yuzu dashi sauce tossed with pasta blankets with a New York strip. All right, so you, how did you want to cook the steak? Just under medium rare. This is a rare to black and blue steak, which is okay by me, but if you were hoping for medium rare, that it's not. What's the acidity in the pasta? Because there's a really punching acidity. Yuzu. And then you grated Parmigiano Reggiano on it. Mm -hmm. So putting yuzu in a pasta is very, very creative. You get the richness from the Reggiano Parmigiano, and then you get acidity from the yuzu, and I kind of enjoyed that. I agree. I love the usage of herbs. I love the little breadcrumb. Tell you, the, the dish is good. I love the sear. It could have done with another two and a half minutes, max. But the pasta's delicious. Good job. Thank good you, job. Chef. Right, Shane, bring your dish down. Thank you. Here I have a Cajun risotto with a blackened catfish served with the Cajun cream sauce. The risotto looks spot on, so I'm hoping for a lot of flavor. What do you think? I think it's pretty good, Chef. Shane, let me tell you something. I was not making risottos like that at 18 years of age. Thanks, sure. Chef. Uh, the blackened catfish is cooked beautifully. What the dish does need is a touch of citrus acid on top of that fish. Shane, let me give you a word of advice. Cream sauces are for amateurs. You're not an amateur. You didn't need it. The risotto is uh, well executed. You made it your own, you gave it a little Cajun twist, you nailed it. For me, Shane, I think the catfish was great. The flavors are clear, they're clean and robust. Good job. Thank you. Dara, can you bring your dish up for it, please? I prepared a Chinese-style steamed cod with a stuffed bok choy and a seasoned dashi broth. Uh, Dara, visually, it looks beautiful. Elegant piece of cod. Um, maybe a touch too big for the size of the circumference of the bowl. We'll see when we get in there. And tell me about the dashi broth. I wanted to take the umami flavors from the kombu, and I also added a little bit of lemongrass and lime to break through some of the umami. Dara, the dish is delicious. Cod is cooked beautifully, and the broth, it tastes good. You're cooking with such finesse. Imagine another five years training. You'll only be 25 years of age, ready to kick all our asses. Great job. What you're able to do is with the aromatics, like the ginger and the scallion and the chili, they've softened up, so I can actually have them. Usually, you wouldn't have a piece of ginger like that, but you can. Smart. Thank you, Chef. This dish is, um, it's electric. Bravo. Thank you, Good Chef. Good job. Thank you. Right, Shane, Dar, and Tejo, um, excuse us for a moment, please. Yeah, that's amazing. This is now where we need three aprons. Yeah. Because all three of those dishes... Yeah, we're really good. 
Whoever gets the apron, we gotta make sure this season is a junior winner, all right? Three great dishes, buying for only two aprons. Really, very, very impressive. Among the three, there was a clear standout dish. And this apron goes to Dara. Well done, Dara. Thank you. Good great job. job. Dara. Congratulations. Dara, you've got the education and you've got the foundation. So, congratulations. Thank you so much. Right, Taiho, Shane. Been a very tough decision, but the final apron goes to. Man, I am excited. Feels so good to be competing with the adults. We're grown, and it's it's time to play with the big dogs, or the, it's time for the big dogs to play with me. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of myself. I was so close to that apron, I maybe should have left the steak on the pan a little longer, but either way, I stood there, and I was proud of what I made, and I was proud of my peers around me. This apron means everything to me. I doubt myself a lot, and having a MasterChef apron proves that I'm meant to do this, and I think the judges see that. I'm proud of you. Next time on MasterChef Back to Win, all of these ex-contestants are back with a vengeance. The pressure is on as the audition battles conclude. Are you back to win? 100%. With only six aprons left to claim a spot. I hope you like it, Spike. In the top 20. Where's Fred I think this is done. Your seasoning here is really what's bringing this to the next level. Now I'm treating you like I would talk to a cook in my restaurant, because that's the level we're at. There's so much going on here. I don't know if I need a chair or a sick bag. One potato, two potato.